các bạn có thể ăn tỏi xong rồi đi hôn người yêu cũng ok lắm á rất là thơm các nhân dịp Valentine Day thì mình hãy ăn một bó tỏi đi rồi mình đi chơi thì nó sẽ rất là phù hợp <cười> We got a really big um, influx of immigrants from Vietnam So I think like um, the area that I grew up in was really heavily influenced by Vietnamese My mom had me when she was only 15 Oh wow Yeah, my dad had a really bad drug problem and so he wasn't really there for me growing up And so I mostly grew up with my mom and my grandma At the time, you know, I'm like four or five years old I don't know much about myself and he would just call me fag me growing up in a really Vietnamese area, um, my family had some troubles. This is Afrovia TV. Welcome to my world. Welcome to another beautiful episode of Bun Rio. Chào tất cả các bạn, mình tên là Mr. Na, đẹp trai nhất Việt Nam Welcome to today's episode of Bún Rio Where we get to reveal all the dishes of Vietnamese All the Vietnamese dishes that has something to do with bún So, as you can see, the weather is a little bright, it's a little sunny today And I'm dressed for the occasion Today's episode is gonna be a very fun episode Because I'm doing this episode with one of my friends we will be trying this dish together and at the end of the day, we will see if it's a dish that we will be coming back for or if it's a dish that I will say nay or yay. Let's go in and see what Lung Vu, our guest for today, wants to introduce to us. See you guys All right guys, as already introduced, today our guest for this episode of Boon Real is none other than my brother here, MKI. My friend, Lung Vo. You guys think he's a foreigner or he's a Vietnamese? I don't even know. Em giới thiệu bản thân trước đi. Xin chào mọi người, mình tên là Lung Vũ. Mình sinh sống tại Thành phố Hồ Chí Minh trên mười mấy năm rồi. Và mình là người gốc ở Mỹ. Ba mẹ mình gốc thì bồ đào nha, nhưng mà mình sinh ra và lớn ở Mỹ. Yeah, I can speak English too. So are you sure? People always hate on me and say I can't speak English, but it's okay. You can hate all you want. I don't care. Uh, Luân hồi xưa là mình đã từng sống ở miền Trung rất là nhiều năm ừ. Nên là uh, Luân thường ăn các món ăn miền Trung nhiều hơn là miền Nam Ok Thành ra là khi mà Nam mời mình đi ăn bún thì Món ăn đầu tiên mới nghĩ ra là bún mắm nem Cái gì đặc biệt là bún mắm nem? Bún mắm nem tại vì nó sẽ dùng mắm nem thì uh, Không biết là Nam có hay ăn mắm không? Không phải là Trời ơi Nam không thích lắm không? Chỉ là Nam có thể ăn được mà, có thể ăn được Vì Nam không phải là người Việt Khi nào mà mình cảm thấy là mình thèm nước mắm á Thì lúc đó mình mình là người Việt Thôi Thì bây giờ luôn nói nè Không phải Từ cái nước mắm đó là họ làm từ cái gì cô biết không? Không Tôm đúng không? Không Nước mắm nước mắm nó làm từ cá cơm Cá cơm đúng Cá cơm là anchovies, right? So đúng cái con đó, cái cá cơm đó họ lấy á Họ ủ lại muối để thành mắm nem nữa Thì mắm nem họ có thể làm từ cá cơm nè có những loại họ làm từ cá nục nữa ừ. có nhiều loại mắm nem lắm nhưng mà mắm mắm nem mà truyền thống của mình đó là thường làm từ cá cơm cũng giống như là bên nước mắm đó ừ. so, nhưng mà mắm nem nó có nhiều loại nó có những loại mà nó điểm hơn con cá nè nó có những loại mà nó sẽ nhuyễn ra thì cái mùi nó sẽ đậm vị hơn nó ngon hơn mùi này sao? lát nữa sẽ thử cho biết nữa rất là <cười> <cười> guys I don't even know what they smell I hope it doesn't smell like bún làm mắm tôm right um, so I think shrimp paste has a more vulgar smell to me. Oh my um, Mom name doesn't have like the super strong pungent smell like uh, mom tom, so don't worry about that too oh much. My um, also, you should realize like uh, usually mom name we're gonna put like pineapple and stuff inside it, so it's gonna have like pineapple. a ta tangy flavor. It's good. Really? Yeah, yeah you 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 enjoy it. You mà cái 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 thịt là thịt gì? The what? The thịt 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 thịt. Cái thịt đó so. When you have bún mắm nem, so basically bún mắm nem is a kind of dish we eat at home often. So we can put whatever we want. Okay. But um. At the end, come on. Usually, usually you can eat. No pork. I don't eat pork. Yes, sir. Um, they have. I ask them what they have. Sometimes they have fish cake. Okay. Sometimes they're gonna have pig ear. Sometimes they're gonna have like a Hawaii, so like roasted pork. Sometimes they're gonna have uh, tit lok or boiled meat. Không có bò hả? No. But in a, in a little bit, there's another dish here too. It's okay. called bún cá ngừ. So it's like a tuna noodle. You can eat tuna, right? Yeah. Yeah, bún cá ngừ is also good too. So yeah. this particular restaurant is like um, 
specializing in Da Nang flavor dishes okay. and Da Nang dishes, okay. but most of these dishes you can find across all Central Vietnam. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so you want to order now? So, uh, let's go. Let's okay. go for it. So you can look at the menu here, or cook bang, right? Uh -huh. So when I, when I speak Vietnamese, I don't mix English. So when people say you want mano, I said no, put no. Yeah, you should pra practice <laughs> that. <laughs> your, your, your English, or your Vietnamese will get even better, right? Okay. So you can see they have bung mam name, they have tập cẩm, we'll try everything, right? Yep. Thịt quay, thịt lột, tai, mũi, chả bò, chả cá, nem, chả. So you can eat chả bò or chả cá if you want. Chả bò, chả bò đi. Bung mam nem, chả bò. But since we're recording, I recommend we try like maybe one bung mam nem and okay. then one uh, bung cá ngừ. Okay. Right. One bun mắm nem. We're trying two dishes in one episode. So that's interesting. And wanna, uh, wanna one try? of my favorite dishes. This is not bun, but it's um bánh trưng cuốn canh So you can have like canh nộp, which in English I think is mackerel. Okay. So they're gonna like steam mackerel, and then you can wrap it in uh, rice paper. It's also a good dish too. Okay. So. Okay. Basically, anything in the central, you'll notice we like to like roll everything up. Nhưng mà đối với em, cái món nào làm món ngon nhất á? Bún nem Bún mắm nem Bún mắm nem nhưng mà loại nào? Nếu mà gặp em nha ờ. Em sẽ ăn heo quay Heo quay Em sẽ ăn heo quay hoặc là hoặc là Heo quay hoặc là tai ờ. Tai nó sẽ giòn ờ. Nhưng mà anh đâu có ăn được đâu Anh đâu có ăn Anh, anh có thể ăn, anh có thể thử ăn không sao đâu Nhưng mà không ăn nhiều đâu Không ăn nhiều thịt đâu À nhưng mà ăn được ờ, Có thể ăn được Ăn tai heo bao giờ chưa? Chưa bao giờ Nó sụng mà nó rất là giòn nó, nó, Nhưng mà nó em biết rộp, rộp, rộp Có một điều <cười> anh đã hứa với những người khán giả trong series này là cái gì uh, khách nào giới thiệu anh sẽ cùng anh ăn hết ok ok ờ uh. vậy thì bây giờ như nè bún uh. mắm nem ok mình chia một tô tập cảm đi ok với lại bún cá ngừ mình cũng chiều uh... cho anh cái này cái này thật rất là thú vị thì đó uh. mà. ok mới thử cái uh. mắm nem đó bây giờ anh không lựa chọn những cái đó tại vì em là người uh, mời anh đến đây em sẽ giới thiệu món này em, em ơi bây giờ mình nhận ra cái này đúng không được không được được mình ăn chung đúng không ờ uh, uh, sau đó là cái bún cá ngừ nữa Ồ, oh, bún cá ngừ đúng không? À, cho một phần bún cá ngừ đại dương đi Chứ là một phần bún nấm nem thịt cẩm Rồi hai bạn ăn gì? Bún cá, bún cá ngừ đại dương á Thịt cẩm hả? Bún nem thịt cẩm á Đúng rồi Cảm ơn cho đẹp So, hai cái thịt cẩm oh. Hai cái thịt cẩm Nước uống á Hai cái này nè, à Có gì uống hả? À Chà cá chín, chà cá chín, chà cá chín, chà cá chín Chà bà, rồi bà cả hai luôn đi, okay. đem quay mà cho anh phần chả cá chiên với lại phần uh, hến xào đi Bánh đạp nữa em Với lại cho anh uh, thêm chả đá lại Có chả đá mà không đá Có chả mà không đá không? Sao vậy? Chả đá không đá Ừ Chả à. đá không đá Không đá đó Chả đá không đá Anh bị ho mà không không được không đá Thôi tụi tôi ho mà tôi vẫn không đá hoài tôi chết luôn kệ nó Mà nãy giờ em ho hoài mà <cười> Ho đi chết <cho> nó bộ <cười> Ok Here you go This is all the food that we have on this Tukdon, as we call it Okay Yep Rồi, ok Yeah, đoán tới rồi kìa Oh wow Đây là gì? Đây là bún mắm nem tập cảm Bún mắm nem tập cảm Trong này là mọi người có thể thấy rằng là ở đây có heo quay này Ok Có chả bò này Ừ Thịt luộc Ờ, tai heo Đó Wow Chả bò đà nẵng này là... Nhìn hấp dẫn quá Ông, Anh ăn chả rồi đúng không? Ừ. Chả bình thường thì nó làm từ heo Còn cái này chả bò nó sẽ có cái mùi nó... Nó bò <cười> Ăn cho nó no đi Cho nó no chết nè <cười> Rồi Cảm ơn bé Ủa wow Có nhiều luôn Cái này là... Cái này là... Bốn cá ngừ đại dương ừ. Bỏ đại đi em À, cái này có đi kèm rồi hả? Cái này là cái gì? Cái này là... Trời ơi, hến Nãy tôi nói hến đó, hến nó hơi nhỏ nha Nhưng mà nó là con hến á Cái này bánh đạp nè Cái này sau này em nè. em, em gửi hết cho anh Cái nha. này bánh đạp là ở giữa này là có bánh ướt nè ừ. Sau bên ngoài là bánh chanh nướng Cái này bánh Ở bên trong là bánh ướt Cái này bánh đạp Dạ hả? Ừ, sau so, so trong này là có tí mỡ hành nó trọng á Xong rồi cái này là bánh ướt nè Rồi cái này là bánh 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 bánh, bánh, bánh chanh nướng á ừ. Cái là bánh đạp Rồi Đây bánh đạp còn cái món này là món bún cá ngừ đại dương thì cá ngừ là một cái món đặc sản của miền trung ở mấy cái vùng miền trung thì cái biển sẽ lớn hơn là ở miền nam thành ra là họ sẽ bắt được cá ngừ bự có mấy cái cá ngừ bự hơn có người luôn to đùng luôn á rồi cái này sẽ nấu với lại bí đỏ này đó cho nó có ngọt nước một tí đó ok vui vẻ ok khi mình ăn đồ ăn miền trung thì uh, thứ nhất mình phải có là ớt xanh ok ớt xiêm ha có phải là ớt đỏ hả no 
miền trung mà phải ăn cái ớt này nó mới nó mới đúng mới ngon ha rồi với lại mình ăn thì ăn với tỏi sống biết ăn tỏi sống không cái này chắc cay cái này thường là khi mà mình cuốn bánh tráng mình hay ăn cái này nhiều nhưng mà tráng mình sẽ lột tỏi ra mình ăn sống cho nó ngon thì tùy thôi phải lột giả chứ rã rồi cái gì nữa các bạn có thể ăn tỏi xong rồi đi hôn người yêu cũng ok lắm á rất là thơm các nhân dịp Valentine Day thì mình hãy ăn một mớ tỏi đi rồi mình đi chơi thì nó sẽ rất là phù hợp <cười> Ok So ờ um... à. Đâu có cài đầu mà Bổ về Rồi lại là cái món cuối cùng của anh em nè Cho cho chính một với em Ôi giời ơi Rồi đây là cái món chả cá Món chả cá nữa Ờ à, chả cá này làm cái gì không biết Ủa em ơi cái chả cá làm cái gì ạ Cá Nhiều loại cá lắm Nhiều loại cá lắm nhưng mà cái này cái cá tinh lên không nói chung là nhiều cá không ừ. nói chung là nó nó, nó tạp nham đó ờ, lộn nó 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 hỗn hợp ừ. nó, nó pha trộn đó ừ. ví dụ cái này ăn với uh, cái này đúng không dạ vâng ạ à, bỏ vô bún xong rồi trộn lên đây bây giờ tôi làm cho tôi làm cho anh tí này đợi xíu đúng không đúng 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 rồi ê ê tôi bỏ ớt cái này có trộn hay trộn lại nhiều ớt lắm nha ôi trời ơi biết ăn ớt không cay đúng không cay chứ chết cha rồi không biết ăn thì đội 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 cho chết cha ăn tô này đi không ăn ăn, ăn luôn đi ok được có sợ gì đâu không biết ăn là được ok cay thì khóc <cười> mùi cái mắm nem đối với tôi cái gì ôi mắm tôm nhiều mắm tôm nó sẽ hơi uh, ố về mm. ngon không Sao? Cảm nhận của mình như thế nào ạ? À? Phê <cười> Không lại là phê Rất là phê Lấy cái bánh tráng nướng này mình đập nó ra đi Đó, mình để ra đi nè Đó, mình lấy miếng này Đó Oh wow Này Ngon mà Ăn gì đó Ờ, ờ Này giống như bên nước ngoài người ta ăn Uh, orders rồi đó là bruschetta rồi đó nên ăn cái gì đó ha it's good right mm. so really good. the the flavor of it is like um, kind of a little bit similar with uh, canned anchovies right like you get like that yeah. oceany flavor yeah, exactly. right the flavor is really strong so you can wow this is good you can kind of eat this as like a kind of Appetizer or you can eat it as like a main course too. So hun, they can make a lot of different dishes with hun. So you can make like um, uh, a boom dish too with hun. So it's called like boom hun. I like this one. You can eat gom hun no? So you eat rice too. Why? Why are they salty? They're a little salty. I don't eat a lot of salt. Central Vietnamese people don't like sweet food, but they like to eat salty. So if you travel across Vietnam, like mostly in the north, they eat uh, a lot of boiled food. Mm and fried food. The central part of Vietnam, they eat a lot of vegetable and a lot of salty foods. Mm. And in the southern part of Vietnam, they eat very sweet. Very sweet, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just difference in preference. So in the central, most people are like working as fishermen mm. on the ocean. Yeah. So oh, like- This is really good. Oh, I love They like to eat salty. But it's, my, my preference is salty and spicy. Cái này là bánh đạp nè. Bánh gì? Bánh đạp. Đạp. You know what đạp means, right? Mm. Yeah. So for bánh đạp, uh, they put like the fresh rice noodle inside here okay. and the outside is the grilled rice paper. Mm -hmm. and inside they have like a little bit of um, scallion oil. Mm. So you just can rip it like that. If you want to, I get for you. Okay. If you want to dip in, I usually dip in fish sauce but you can dip in mắm nem too, it's fine. Mắm nem as well? Yeah, because we're doing mắm nem so you can have mắm nem. <laughs> It's a popular street food in the countryside for like oh, good. children, right? Mm. So, <clears throat> if you travel around in like uh, central Vietnam, a lot of places mm. sell this on the street. More of the mắm nem, please. Nè, 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 đợi thêm được. Oh, we dip. Trời, ông kêu là thêm mắm nem kìa, no. chơi chơi vui vậy. <laughs> <laughs> vậy là hôm nay no, mình... No, the, the thing is... Vậy mình thành công nha mọi người. The mắm nem with this one, it's not as good as mắm nem with this. Seriously, so this one with the mum name, just like heaven. I think you will like a lot of the 
there's a lot of dishes you can um, roll with rice paper and dip in. Mom name, so maybe you're gonna like that more. Oh my days! I when love you dip, this. you smell more flavor, right? You can taste flavor more. So what actually? What is this called? This one now? Mắm đập. Mắm đập. Đập. Nó hồi nãy sao không đập? Người ta đập trong bếp á. So khi mà họ nấu cái này á, là họ nướng cái bánh tráng lên. Sau mà họ bỏ cái nước, bánh nước vô, bỏ mỡ hành vô. Sau này đập trong này. Họ lấy cái sẻn nó đập đập chứ Đi nấu sẻn Sẻn là gì? <cười> Spatula <cười> Spatula sẻn X-E-N-G hỏi sẻn mm. Alright, next one I wanna try This one Ok, so This one is um, bún cá ngừ Bún cá ngừ đại dương Basically, they're gonna have um, tuna in here Pumpkin mm. So this is pumpkin right here okay. And it looks like they put some cabbage in here too But I mean you can basically give lots of different kinds of fresh vegetables here. Okay. So like um, this here is gonna be garlic and um, chili already mixed mixed, mixed yeah. together. Yeah, you yeah. can put inside there. If you go to like central Vietnam, you'll find there's even more vegetables, but we're in Saigon, so selected. <laughs> now, um, can I? Oh, this is good. So cái cá ngư này nếu mà mình muốn chấm nó thì mình đừng có chấm mắm nem, mình phải chấm nước mắm. Okay. Ok, nó mới đúng Mắm này là mắm ngọt Nó có đường rồi Ok Xong rồi mình sẽ bỏ ớt vô thì ở đây có ớt xay nhưng mà luôn tuyệt đối không bao giờ sẽ ớt xay Tại vì mình chảnh Mình sẽ chỉ sẽ ớt tươi à, Cái này cũng được, tạm tạm okay. mình, Tạm thời mình xay cái này đi cũng được Mình bỏ vô đây Được một xíu thôi Cái gì cũng phải có ớt hết Đúng rồi chứ mới ngon Alright One of the few questions I've always wanted to ask you is What was your relationship, I mean, with Vietnam as a whole. How did you come about understanding Vietnamese, speaking like a local, understanding <laughs> things like a local as well? What was, how, how did you come about your relation? How was the... So my story's a little bit, yeah. my story's a little bit strange. Okay. So, <clears throat> I was born in the U.S., of course, okay. um, and I, I was raised in a part of uh, the U.S. that's a little bit like rough. So in my area, there's a lot of drugs and crime okay. and a lot of other stuff happening. But at the same time, it was a really cheap place to live. So we got a really big um, influx of immigrants from Vietnam. So I think like um, the area that I grew up in was really heavily influenced by Vietnamese. Like next to my house, there's a Vietnamese temple. There's like five of them. Really? Um, every morning I could wake up and hear them like... Um, what part of the US is that? Portland, Oregon. Okay. Yeah. okay. So you can always hear like people like Tom Ken, like, you know, chanting. Chanting, right? And so um, I grew up next to that, and then I mean, next to my house, even like there was like a Safeway. You know, Safeway in the U.S. Yeah. The Vietnamese bought the Safeway and opened Home Fact, oh, wow. supermarket, right? And so then there's like you no, know, there's like three Home Fact by my house, mm. and there's even like so many more now. And so the area I grew up in is really, really, really Vietnamese. Not that influenced you into. That, so this, I'm just, I'm just setting up a little bit of the story so you can yeah. understand. So me growing up in a really Vietnamese area, um, my family had some troubles growing up and so I, my mom had me when she was only 15. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, so it was a little bit uh, difficult growing up where my mom and my dad were so young. My dad had a really bad drug problem and okay. so he wasn't really there for me growing up and so I mostly grew up with my mom and my grandma. Okay. And so my mom was working all the time, you know, she was a single mom. She had, you know, you. me and my sister, okay. and then later on she got married when I was like around um, six or seven. Okay. She started dating a guy, and he was really bad, and he was he treated me like shit. Like he, at the time, you know, I'm like four or five years old. I don't know much about myself, and he would just call me fag. Hey, you faggot! I hate you. I'm gonna kill you. And when, when I'm so young, I don't really think I know anything about myself. I don't know if I'm gay or straight. I really don't know anything. I just know like who I am. And for him to be like ridiculing me constantly, it really made me shut myself off with my family. And I didn't want anything to do with anyone. And I mean, I might say my mom was bad towards me because my mom was always working. You know, she was trying to provide for us. And so um, I really kind of like ran away from my family and just made friends with the, like people outside and it happened, so happens that the friends I made were all Vietnamese. Oh. And so when I would come to my friend's house and I see like their parents care for them and are always like cooking for them and asking how their day was, it really spoke to me and so ever since I was pretty young I started adapting Vietnamese culture since I was like you know, 
six or seven. And so fast forward a bit, when I was around 10 or 11 years old, is when I um, met a lady, her name is Kim, and I was doing some school plays and stuff like that, and I got to know her pretty well. And she was um, my friend's mom, and she was sewing. And so I would often hang out with her down in the, there was like a basement where we would sew. And so I'd hang out with her and we'd make costumes for the play and we would just talk in Vietnamese. And so I mean, at the time I knew Vietnamese a bit when I met her already. I had known Vietnamese a bit. But I think um, the connection with her really like sealed it off and made me want to... all of this, you've never been to Vietnam? No, so I, I, I like to reiterate, before yeah. I came to Vietnam, I spoke Vietnamese this way already. Oh wow. <laughs> From the U.S. From the U.S. Yes, the U.S. has so many Vietnamese people. Like, my house is here, right? The house across from me is Vietnamese. Both left and right are Vietnamese and adjacent are Vietnamese. It's all Vietnamese. And so, like, um, in the U.S. I don't speak English too. I just speak Vietnamese all the time. Because it, it was like my safe bubble. I mean, when I, I think when you're a child and you don't know what to do, yeah. the first thing you do is you just make a bubble, like a personal space bubble exactly. to protect yourself, right? And so, like, um, like I usually have the saying that a home is where your heart is. Yeah, yeah. So exactly, I agree. Especially where you feel very safe. That's that's yeah. where you want to be all the time. That's yeah. where you find your comfort zone. Yeah. So I think like um, when I was around 18 years old, I wanted to go to college, but it was really difficult because my mom just graduated um, from nursing school, and so she started to make more money. So on her taxes, it was too high, so I couldn't get financial aid. But at the same time, she had a lot of student debt, so she couldn't pay for my college. And I just thought, like, why am I going to go to school and get a crap ton of debt and have no job? And I don't want to be in the U.S. anyways. I was really just, like, tired of the U.S. I didn't like the negative environment that I was living in. And so I moved to Vietnam. And I actually, at first, I kind of, like, tricked my family. I said, oh, I'm just going to go visit for, like, three months. And then the second I came to Vietnam, I knew I wasn't going to leave. Well, prior so, to coming to Vietnam, did you have any friends or family here in Vietnam? I didn't know anyone. And, no one. But you have to understand, even in the U.S., I didn't have really anyone because okay. I kind of shut everyone off after all of the stuff that happened. Mm -hmm. And so even like nowadays, I have no friends in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, I have a few friends that are Vietnamese in the U.S. that I talk to, but um, not very often. I mostly just, um, since, ever since I moved to Vietnam, you know, I started... Um, working here and living here and just um, building all my relationships here and so like even everybody that I've dated, everybody that I hang out with, all of my friends, anybody that I consider to be like the, my extended family is all in Vietnam really. And so like even recently I travel back to the US and I mean obviously I can speak English no problem yeah. but there's such a disconnection yeah. between me and you know, everyone else. And it's a cultural difference. And I think like, yeah, I understand culture, obviously. I grew up in the US. I'm not gonna be like that kind of like asshole that says, oh, I forgot English. No, I don't forget nah. English. No, but um, I definitely say that there's like a disconnect. And I think like, um, yeah, it might be by choice. Yeah. It, it might be by choice, but there's a disconnect. And so I don't really have a desire to move back to the US. Right. I mean, I, I, I consider myself like, when I get older, I want to look at different alternatives like moving to central Vietnam because I, I spent a lot of time like four or five years in Satik and I want to spend more time in central Vietnam and like uh, maybe buy some property and just make a little resort by the beach and, and enjoy myself. But um, yeah, that's my life. That's, so, that's, that's quite interesting. I've actually never shared my story that yeah, much. Yeah, you haven't, you know, yeah. because we've been friends for years now, but. We haven't really had this conversation or, uh, you know, yeah. talked a lot. We've always been like, uh, all, all the time we meet at work. Yeah. It's always at work. So it's kind of very um, interesting to understand people's stories and to hear what they have been through. And it, it's similar in, in some ways, you know, growing up in Africa, uh, having to go through all the, all the turbulent times and all the things yeah. that we had to experience. So. Sometimes you feel like you're all alone and you have no one to talk to, you have no one to understand what you're going through. So yeah. you only have yourself. Well, I think a lot of people, they think the U.S. is like this rich, fancy country. Exactly. But you have to understand, like, where I grew up, people are, are using, like, um, methamphetamine yeah. and a lot of even heavier drugs. Now yeah. it's like uh, fentanyl. Yeah. You know, I can walk down the street and there's, like, people dead on the street because they're overdosing on drugs. 
um, the area I live in, like, when I was in third grade, <clears throat> a guy took a machete and stabbed another guy, and I saw it right in front of my face, and he died. And so these kind of things, like, I live in Vietnam, and I've never even seen anything that bad. Like, in Vietnam, is really safe. And the things that I saw in the U.S. is like, to me, that's not safe. I mean, it's bad. And especially, like, I think the, um, the amount of consumerism in the U.S., I think it really affects people. And so, I mean, in the U.S., one thing I don't like is, like, whenever I talk to anybody back in the U.S., however much money you make, it's not enough. You need more money. You need to buy the new TV. You need to buy a new car, buy a new house constantly. And it's like, to me, I don't like the consumerism lifestyle. I consider it kind of not fun. You know, that's the thing that's, that's the thing I love about Vietnam. There's this balance between work and you know, my, my play. Yeah, like in Vietnam, I can get out of work, you know, 6, 7 p.m. and call some friends up and go to coffee or exactly. I can go to the bar. I can do whatever I want. And you don't have to work two, three jobs to meet up. Yeah, whereas in the U.S. is like when you get off work, people just want to go to sleep. They want to go home and they want to relax and yeah. they want to watch my Netflix and uh, eat my popcorn and get my shoes on and so there. I'm like, that, that's not fun. I don't enjoy that's that lifestyle, so. Oh man, that's that's very interesting to But don't think that I'm a naked person. I'm always no, very positive. Okay, it's, this is why I don't share my story that it's often. It's not really negative. I don't see it's much It's just the negative. truth. It's, it's an inspiring story. Thank to you. To me, I think it's, it's very inspiring, you know? Yeah. Going through all the things you went through and being who you are with all, you know, every time I see you, I mean like you're like <coughs> probably sunshine you're always very happy and smiley and i mean you're it's very infectious thank you sometimes the, people don't understand that behind all the smiles and all the all the happiness there are this darkness and this things that yeah. you you carry with you yeah. you know that's the same thing you know when we are in the spotlight doing all these shows and all these things that we do People don't get to see the other side of the burdens that we, we carry all along and yeah. it's it's so relieving when you get to share those things and yeah. it, it lifts you up a little bit. So it's not, I don't consider it like dark stories, I don't consider it yeah. to be like negative stories, it's like stories that impact people, that inspire people to yeah. understand that wherever you are in life, whatever you're going through, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. So if this guy or this girl can go through this same experience that you're going through and came out of it with, uh, with something positive, you have hope. Yeah. So it's a very hopeful story. So don't, don't ever feel like you're, you're being negative or you're, you're not enough or you're something that uh, should not be celebrated. So I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's something that you need to worry about. Very positive. Thank yeah. you for your... Um your positive, your positive uh, yeah, words. For real, for sure. Good vibes, okay. All right, now, <laughs> let's take a break from that. The next one is quick fire questions. So, quick fire question. Um, Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh? Neither. Neither? Yeah, neither. Whoa. I've, I've lived in both. Okay. I don't like either that much <laughs> because I don't like crowded. Crowded places. Um, I don't like hot. Okay. For me, if I was to pick any place I would live yeah. in Vietnam, it would probably be Win Young, mm. Nha Trang, or Da Nang. Mm. Those are the top three places I would live. Maybe Phang Rang too, but basically for me, I prefer a place where I can see mountains, mm. I can see the ocean, and I have uh, good infrastructure. So that's how I pick a good city that I want to live in. I currently live in Saigon because... Work. I open a business here and I do well here, and so that's why I'm here. I'm young and I'm just, you know, starting off my business, but um, in the future, I don't plan to stay here forever, no. Right. Um, so if you ask me, Hanoi, Saigon, neither, because I don't like crowded and I don't like pollution. Okay. Um, I like nature. I like the feeling of on the weekend, I can just take a 10, 15 minute drive and go mountain climbing. Or I can go to the beach if I want to. If I'm stressed out, I can just go to the beach. So I would pick a place that I have more nature. I mean, in Ho Chi Minh City, sometimes I think to myself, I want a nice green space, and I just drive, and I can never find one, and I feel angry. <laughs> and you know, maybe I can go to District Two, and maybe yeah. they have a park or so. But it's, I don't want a park. Too, I want real nature. Yeah. I want to see birds, and I want to see, you know. <clears throat> you don't want fake nature. I don't want fake nature. I don't want fake nature. No. Fake nature. <laughs> And you know, in Hanoi, I gotta say, I love the feel of Hanoi. It's very romantic. It's very... Really? I mean, you get four seasons. I like that. It okay. reminds me of home a bit, but... Okay. 
I don't, like I said, I don't like the pollution. Yeah. And the pollution in Hanoi can sometimes be a really big barrier for me. Okay. Especially if you go like when it's high smog in Hanoi. There's like, um, you can look at the air quality, the air quality index, and it will even say it's dangerous to breathe. It's scary. So I mean, <laughs> in my opinion, that's my opinion. Okay. <laughs> but All right. I, next question. Mm. Cats or dog? Mm. Huh? Cat or dog? Huh? Yeah. Oh, I'm born the year of the dog. <laughs> but but I, that doesn't mean. But that. I have a cat, and so her name is Trần Thị Chấm Chao. Trời ơi trời. Do you know Chao? Yeah. Chao is like a stinky tofu. No. So Chấm is mean dip. So Chấm Chao is like dip in stinky tofu. That's her name. Then yeah, what? Okay. Oh well. As we're about wrapping up the shows, um, this has been a very great experience. You know, I really love the um, the dishes that you that you introduced to us today, and um, I really enjoyed talking to you. I'm, I've known you all those years, but I really got to learn a lot about you today, and uh, it's really inspiring. I really appreciate you opening up and talking yeah. to me about this. And it gives me a lot of um, good vibes to understand that you are not alone. That's just the that's just the one thing I want you to take out of this: that whatever you go through, whatever happens in your life, that you are not alone. There are other people who are going through exactly the same things that you go through. And once you understand that, <clears throat> that these people are surviving and are striving. I mean, if you go to my place, if you go to my country, you go to different parts of the world, there are people who wish to have 10% of what you have. Of course, yeah. So if you keep uh, dwelling on your misfortunes, and if you keep um, regretting about things that happened and trying to lament or mourn or, you know, <coughs> your, your life is the worst. There are people who wish they have 10% of your life. Yeah. Sure. That alone should give you like courage, like, oh, I think I'm the worst person in the world. I think I'm suffering a lot. But there are people who are even worse than me and they are smiling. They are even happy playing. Right. So those are the things that when I when I talk to people, I try as much as possible to make them realize that you are not going through the worst thing in life. I understand that yeah. you feel you are down, you're feeling this, you're feeling that, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So if you can, what, one of my favorite words, words that I learned from my uncle is, every time I'm going through something, he will always tell me. He doesn't want to hear any explanation. You say, hey man, this too shall pass. So. That is one of the favorite words I, I learned from him when I was young. Every time, I, I keep wondering, why is he always saying this? Uncle, stop saying He always tell me, man, chin up this too shall pass yeah. so whatever you think whatever is going on at this moment in time always remember that those words this too shall pass they shall all pass so i'm always very positive so like i usually tell people whatever happens in my life i don't see it as a negative i see it as a lesson i'm telling you if i'm going now and i smash my motorbike i don't see it could have been worse maybe that smashing on my motorbike prevented me from having an accident along the way that's how i always see my life i always try to twist it from negative to positive right though that's that's where i live i don't dwell on the negatives as much that's that's what gives me hope that's what keeps me going so i'm i'm really pumped i'm really happy that i get to share this moment with you you are my little brother and i'm really really happy to uh, um, know a little bit more about you and your journey and your life and everything else so thank you for introducing this beautiful dishes to us and as we close on the show for this very inspiring and educating episode. Also, we had a lot of food to eat. So we need to take our time to finish our dishes and then go back home. So thank you very much, guys, for watching today's episode of Mumbio. And we will see you in the next episode. And as we always say, take a rest, be smart, and be happy. This too is your past. Whatever you're going through, it's your past. Always have a smile, be happy, eat your dishes and drink water. Thank you very much guys, I'll see you in the next episode. Arigato. Bye bye.